you're going to use studio monitors or any physical speakers in a room, the room itself is going to have a huge impact on the sound you're hearing. You can manage the impacts of a room with proper system alignment, strategically placed acoustic treatment, and corrective EQ. In this video, I'm walking you through the process of measuring and applying corrective EQ in your system. The steps in this video will be helpful no matter what gear or software you're using, but I'll be using my RME Fireface UCX2 interface, which happens to have an independent room EQ and delay for every output channel. Setting this up with the RME Sound ID integration is going to make for a very easy to follow video for learning how this works, and it's going to be the finishing touch on my new studio setup. Thank you to RME for sponsoring this video and supporting audio education. If I can measure and understand the effects that my room and studio monitors have on frequency balance, I can use acoustic treatment and corrective EQ to counteract some of those effects. The basic steps come down to this. We have a room or system under test. We send a test signal to the input of the system, measure what comes out of the output of the system, and then compare the two. This is called a transfer function measurement, and the goal is to understand the impact that the system under test has on signals passing through it. First, we're going to measure the room using either a free software like Room EQ Wizard or a paid software like Sound ID Reference Measure. This software is going to generate a frequency response curve that describes the overall impact impact of our sound system in the room, then we'll basically apply the inverse of that curve with an EQ later on. RME and Sound ID have a very straightforward integration where I can simply measure the room with Sound ID, export a file, and import that file into the room EQ within my RME interface. This isn't the only way to do it, but it is my preferred method, and here's why. If there was no Sound ID integration and you just had a basic hardware EQ, you could use Room EQ Wizard to measure your room, which is a free software. Then you could manually enter the filter settings into an EQ, whether that's an EQ within your studio monitors, within your interface, or within a dedicated audio DSP. The measurement process in Room EQ Wizard is sort of intimidating though, so I'd only recommend going that route if you're ready to navigate through some thick menus. Room EQ Wizard is highly customizable and very powerful, but it may be overwhelming for people who aren't familiar with this sort of thing. That's why I like the Sound ID integration with my interface, because Sound ID walks you through the measurement process from beginning to end. And if you just don't have an external device with EQ, be it an audio interface or any of the other options I've listed, you could run the EQ within Sound ID reference. In my case, I'll only be using Sound ID to measure my system, then I'll load that EQ profile into my audio interface. And after the initial measurement process, I'll actually have Sound ID disabled. And here's why I think this makes more sense to use the room EQ within an interface or a hardware device rather than using a plugin or software. First of all, I prefer to select my audio interface driver directly rather than having an intermediary software between my applications on my computer and the audio interface. Using an EQ that doesn't run on the computer both eliminates the potential for software glitches and it moves the EQ to where it really should be in the signal chain. The corrective EQ should ideally be as close to the end of the signal chain as possible. In my case, the EQ is just before the outputs that feed my studio monitors. That means I can apply the corrective EQ to everything that passes through the speakers, not just what comes out of the computer. For me, this means I can integrate my turntable or plug in other sources directly into my interface, and I don't need to worry about what is going through the EQ and what isn't. I know that my monitor A output EQs are always engaged on my studio monitor outputs, and the curves for my monitor B are always engaged on the outputs that feed speaker B, my second pair of studio monitors. I've just installed Sound ID, and I'm going to open it up and click Add New Output and then I'll select the interface and the channels that feed my main studio monitors. Then I'll click Open Measure. These instructions first walk me through the process of connecting a microphone to my interface and uploading a microphone calibration file. Ideally, you'll have a microphone with a very neutral response of its own, such as a measurement microphone. And it's even better if you have a calibration file for that mic so that you can load it into the software which allows the software to compensate for the imbalances caused by the microphone itself. That way we can focus on the imbalances caused by the speakers and the room. The next step is to align the system so that each speaker is equally spaced from the listening position. A helpful guideline is to aim for an equilateral triangle, 
between the back of the listener's head and each speaker. Sound ID guides me through the process of calibrating the system output level. If you're using Room EQ Wizard, I'd use a dedicated SPL or sound pressure level meter and adjust the monitor level to about 75 or 80 dB SPL at the listening position. Once the system is aligned and the levels are set properly, we just place the mic at ear level in the listening position and run a frequency sweep through each speaker. The system knows what the frequency sweep test signal sounds like before going through the monitors in the room, and it can compares that to the signal recorded by the measurement mic. And this alone would generate a curve for each speaker that could be used for corrective EQ. But you can also measure at several locations and aggregate that data into something potentially more useful, which is exactly what Sound ID does. At the end of this process, I load that calibration file and export it out of Sound ID. Then I go to the main output on my audio interface in the RME Total Mix software and select Room EQ. I'll click Preset, import, I'll navigate to the file, and there it is. Notice that this EQ curve resembles the inverse of the room response curve that we just measured. Where there's excess energy, the EQ cuts, and where there's not enough energy, the EQ boosts. I can go through the same exact process with my second pair of monitors and load in a preset of its own. You may have also noticed the delay knob. In a stereo configuration, there shouldn't be any delay between the speakers, and if there is, you should probably fix that problem by adjusting the physical distance between the speakers and the listening position. In an immersive setup, however, you'll need a separate delay for every speaker. You can try your best to measure out an equal distance between the listening position and each speaker in an immersive setup, but you'll then need to fine tune that with digital delays like these. As you can see, the Fireface UCX2 has a room EQ and delay on every output, including the digital outputs. So I could easily run a full Dolby Atmos system with this interface and an ADAT enabled DA converter. Maybe I will in the future. But the same basic principles apply. We're trying to measure and adjust every speaker so that the sound that goes into the speaker is what's heard by the listener. Depending on the placement of each speaker in the room, the EQ curve and delay that's necessary to achieve that goal will change. And luckily, there's a sound ID integration with RME interfaces for immersive setups as well. This was the final step in a very long process that I've gone through to improve the sound of my system. But we wouldn't have gotten this good of results without strategic placed acoustic treatment. And that's what I'm talking about in the video that's on your screen now. So go ahead and click that video link and I'll see you there.